on behalf of TNT Motorsports, Happy New Year and welcome to Power Tracks on ESPN. I'm Richard Leake and with me as usual is Army Armstrong. You know the 1989 winter season for the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series is now underway. But before we begin the process of crowning New Points champions, it's only appropriate that we take a look back at the 1988 season, which you saw right here on ESPN, Army. Well, Richard, when we return from commercial break, we're going to review the, how the national points titles were won in two of the truck classes, the modified four-wheel drive and the super-modified two-wheel drive. It was an exciting year in both of these classes. Both the four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive classes last summer. Indeed it was, Richard. Our two new champions had never won national titles, and they battled the crafty veterans tooth and nail all season long in clinching their titles in dramatic fashion at the end of the year. The modified four-wheel drive title went to Howard Lewis in the High Roller Chevrolet out of New Carrollton, Maryland, while Mike Stoll, the bad dog Ford out of Warrington, Georgia, captured the two-wheel drive title. Well, you know, the points race for four-wheel drive trucks on the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series in 1988 quickly became a two-truck race between Howard Lewis and Jerry Weaver. Early in the season, Lewis took the lead by winning the first three times he hooked to the sled in Nashville, Tennessee and Tupelo, Mississippi. He had a seven-point advantage entering Memphis, Tennessee, but that's where Weaver got his act together. So this is Jerry Weaver and the Nationwide Auto Parts Machine. This is taped in Memphis Motorsports Park last year, Army. And remember, Jerry Weaver came into this event seven points behind Howard Lewis. But the Nationwide Auto Machine is one to be reckoned with. All year long, he has said he could win the national championship, Richard. Teamed up with Chevrolet, the Kendall Motor Oil Nationwide Auto Parts sponsorship. He's financed to chase these points. He believes he can do it. And... I actually speak louder than words. He's been running awfully strong all year long, Richard. Well, you can't get much better than a full pull, and that's exactly what Jerry Weaver got in Memphis. And really, he got it at a disadvantage. He was one of the early pullers. It's kind of strange. Bad luck, you might think. He drew at the first of the field. Remember, we've been in the middle of a heat wave. The track was awfully dry, but it had just enough moisture for Weaver to put the Chevrolet in a winter circle. So Jerry Weaver did what he had to do in Memphis. He made a full pull. That put the pressure on two other guys. One of them was this one, Jim Lyons out of Louisville, Kentucky. Boy, he has been a champion so many times in his career. Here he is in his stitches machine. Jim Lyons is known throughout almost all facets of motorsporting. He was a national champion in drag racing. He's been an engine builder. He has raced himself. Everybody knows Lyons. And the one thing you know about Jim Lyons, if you're going against him, you better be ready. Jim teamed up with a couple of fellows out of Red Ball and Springs, Tennessee, Alfred Turner and Milton Bulls. They believe in the GMC product. It gave Jim a free hand to go out there and win a national championship for GMC. Anybody can do it. I believe this youngster out of Louisville, Kentucky is the man that will do it. But Jim Lyons in stitches goes 279.03 feet. That is good enough for fifth place. And an interesting story about where he got the name of his truck, Stitches. Stitches is the name of a company that manufactures and sells denim clothing apparel throughout the world. Well, already you saw Weaver make a full pull. Lyons takes fifth. Now, here's the guy the pressure is on. It's Howard Lewis and High Roller. And remember, he's leading the Redman TNT Points Championship going into this event here in Memphis. Lewis is under tremendous amount of pressure, draws at the bottom of the field. Weaver draws early in the field, shows a full pull as possible, but everybody has been pulling short. The track seems to be going away. Lewis teamed up with Lee Edwards, an old drag racer. He makes a lot of horsepower, and the horsepower seems to be working for him. He also believes that he can get a hold of Weaver and win this national Redman championship. It is going to be a war before the year's over, Richard. Well, Howard Lewis and the high roller machine goes 277.28 feet. That is not near enough uh, to win the event in Memphis, but it was good enough for sixth place. Sixth place, but the year is still in progress. Keep an eye on these two fellas. Nationwide in the high roller, it could get down to these two before it's all over. So Jerry Weaver put all the pressure on Howard Lewis. So Weaver tied Lewis in Memphis. By the way, points are figured like this. 20 points for first, 19 for second, 18 for third, and so on down. Weaver then built a 13-point lead over the next three events, including two wins in Greenville, South Carolina. But Army, the tide turned right there when Lewis put a new engine in his truck. That's right, Richard. 
Lee Edwards dropped a bigger engine into that truck and it immediately paid off. In Fisherville, Virginia, Lewis slashed 12 points off the lead and one hook to the slit. Then he tied it after only two hooks in Lebanon, Tennessee and took a two-point lead into Asheville, North Carolina. It was Weaver's turn to go to the bigger engine. Well, Weaver put a 700 cubic inch engine in the truck going into the pool in Owensboro, Kentucky. But he could only make up a point there. A week later in Charleston, South Carolina, Weaver emerged with a two-point lead going into the final event, the National Tractor Pulling Championships in Bowling Green, Ohio. That was in August. Richard, what a place to decide the points title. The thing about this event is as many as 40 vehicles can enter a single class. You're battling for the national points. It's extra tough here because the best vehicles in the country are involved. The four-wheelers competed twice in Bowling Green, Ohio. Here's what happened in the first day of pulling. First in the competition. And next is a guy we've got to keep our eyes on, Howard Lewis. Only two points away from first place in the Red Man TNT National Championship Point Series. Now, Howard is trying to beat Jerry Weaver for the National Championship. Luck of the draw. Lewis is going to pull early in the field. Weaver pulls late in the field. Lewis running a high roller. Lee Edwards horsepower from the sport of drag racing. They think they've got the combination. Richard, it looks super. Look at this run. Looks like a great pull for Howard Lewis. 298 feet, one inch. Just under two feet from a full pull, Howard Lewis. Certainly going to help himself in the Red Man TNT National title point chase. Army's got him trackside right now to talk about his pull. 1988 provides a lot of action on the Red Men Tour in the 4x4 category. We currently have a war going on between Howard Lewis and Jerry Weaver, both of them in Chevrolet vehicles with only two points separating the national points leader. Howard, you drew early in this field. You're going to have to take this pull. Do you, knew where Do you know where Jerry's in competition today? Jerry's hooking about 37th in the class, so I would say he's probably about midway. He's probably got a pretty good shot at it. Do you think the track's going to get better or is it going to go away? Well, I sincerely, hope, I sincerely hope it goes away <laughs> for my own personal benefit, but generally on this track here, it usually stays about the same all the way through. This is a very consistent track. Back in Bowling Green for the National Tractor Pulling Championships going into the commercial brake army. I talked about my favorite driver on the circuit. Well, here he comes. Donnie Sanders out of my hometown of Nashville, Tennessean, in the Tennessean truck. I think he's going to win for personal reasons. I like the guy. You think he might win because of the tremendous horsepower he's got. You know, we call this the TT combination, Tennessee and Texas. The Tennessean teamed up with the Texan out of San Antonio, Jerry Jankey, who built awesome amounts of horsepower. Rumor is this engine is over 700 cubic inches. He brings it to Bowling Green. The track is known to be a horsepower track. A lot of guys are saying if anybody can do it, it's going to be this truck. He starts the roll. Now, he's in problems a little bit. Now, he horsepowers out. He started to bounce, but he's making enough horsepower, Richard. He drove out of it. It looks like a great run. Richard, we might have our first. We do. First full pole of the afternoon. Donnie Sanders had the weight right, the ground speed right, the horsepower right. Now, he's got the right to take over first place with our first full pull of the day. The crowd loves it. I'm sure he does also. Here's Army. Well, Donnie Sanders out of the volunteer state just bumped up in that number one spot you got to be feeling great right now oh i feel great i mean i just couldn't believe it we were watching the track everybody said it was going to get a little bit better later in the field do you agree with that well i don't know the starting line right now is a little rough but uh down on this end it, it takes a lot of power to pull that sled right now well right now the gentleman out of the volunteer state's number one in a chevrolet but believe me it's not over by a long shot back upstairs to richard coming to the line next the guy we've been waiting for, your current Red Man TNT National Points leader, Jerry Weaver, out of Thornhill, Ohio, the nascent nationwide machine. He needs a great run to hold off Howard Lewis. He lines up on the far left side where the Tennessean did. He's off and running. Not only on the left side, the extreme left. He's pushing a cushion, Richard. And he is uh, bouncing out. He pulled extremely to the left, went out of bounds. He's been disqualified. What a way to lose a national title. Jerry, what happened out there? Ah, uh, we was going to try a new place on the track there and stay down there close to the line. And I was really waiting for it to do that, but it just took me real fast. And uh, I just couldn't bring it back that quick. We were standing on the end of the track. You were coming straight to us. And all of a sudden, everything just jumped left on you. Yeah, it almost looked like I broke something. I think I just hit a soft spot right there, and it just took me right out so fast. I really hate it because that's really going to knock me out of the points lead. Came into the event within two points of the national championship. He's got to go back down the ladder and start working his way back up. But if anybody can do it, this guy out of Ohio is there with the Nationwide Auto Parts Kendall Motor Oil Chevrolet.
What a disappointing loss for Jerry Weaver. He has just given the Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series Championship to Howard Lewis. And the following day of pulling was just as disastrous for Jerry Weaver. Lewis placed a respectable sixth on that day, while Weaver was next to last in the huge field. The Redman TNT title indeed belonged to Howard Lewis. And Army will be right back to review the race for the two-wheel drive points championship in a moment. Two-wheel drive points race became a two-truck contest. And these two pullers, Mike Stowe and Wayne Roush, managed to put away early a guy who had won three consecutive national titles in this class, Army. Richard, Jim Lyons have been dominating the class for almost two years with his stitches GMC. Stowe and Roush got past the puller from Louisville, Kentucky this past summer. Roush's Chrysler powered Model T out of Dublin, Ohio, took an early lead, accumulating as many as a 17 and a half point lead over Stowe. That included a big win in Memphis, Tennessee. We were there. And our second official puller tonight coming to the line now is Mike Stowe out of Warrington, Georgia, driving the Bad Dog Ford. Mike's a good one. He's third currently in the national point standing. Powered by one of the ever-popular Ariad's engines, Stowe, one of the young up-and-comers. He's chasing these national points. Believes he can put a national championship under his belt this year. Pretty good pull going for him. Looks good, but the weight again. You notice the front end skying on him awfully bad. Richard, they have a tremendous amount of weight on the rear of these vehicles tonight. All right, Mike Stowe with a pull of 282.21 feet. And we're going to go trackside with Army Armstrong now. We noticed, Mike, at about the 250 foot mark now, everybody's starting to hook to the right. What's going to happen there? Well, they're in the groove in the track yet for the two wheelers. As soon as the groove develops, I believe a little more will start coming up. And I might have been a little light on the, ear, on the end down here. It's probably about 75 pounds too light. It's skiding right there at the end. And I don't know if it's, the hold is awful dry and hard. Ain't nobody getting a hold to it. It's probably, the moisture's going to come up, and I believe you'll see them going a little further. Probably going to end up with a pull-off. And coming to the line now is your national points leader, Wayne Roush, out of Dublin, Ohio, bringing back the yellow Model T. Richard, this is the second opportunity we've had to see Roush this evening in this vehicle. He took that number one position and turned it down in order to come back and pull the number seven spot in the field. So perhaps he's learned something from the test pull as he is off and running. Roush looking good, right hand on the throttle. The engine makes kind of a little squirrely sound, but he's got some ground speed. He has got a great pull going, not quite a full pull. Wayne Roush. Perhaps it's Dr. Wayne Roush. He's got a doctorate from Ohio State University. Your new leader at 296 feet. Wayne Roush, 296.85. I put you number one. You think you're going to be able to stay there? I think it's got a shot at it. There's some good trucks coming up yet, though. I'll tell you, a moment ago, we noticed kind of a shrill sound coming out of the engine. You think you may have done some damage on that shot? Yeah, my mechanic, Steve Boggs, we did something to it. We don't know what yet. So Wayne Roush built a big early lead. When we return from commercial break, we'll show you how Mike Stowe climbed back into contention and then went on to claim the national title. Kingsport, Tennessee, then won twice in Stafford, Connecticut, and twice in Weedsport, New York. Here's how we called Stowe's winning pools in Connecticut. It was a loose, sandy track that truly challenges the skills of a puller. Stowe's performance there was a turning point in the season. Well, from the Florida Cracker, let's move to a Georgia Peach now. Actually, it's the Bad Dog out of Warrington, Georgia. That is Mike Stowe. He's a dandy, too. He is currently second in the national point standings, and he is off and running. Distance to be 236.46 feet. The, wait a minute. The Bad Dog is shut down just prior to the 75-foot mark, which is legal. Let's go to Army. Mike Stowe out of Warrington, Georgia, realizing the track's going away on him. He decided to move his waist. There's a foul line. It's called a 75-foot mark. You notice the rear of the truck is not past the mark, so just by the skin of his teeth, he stays alive. He's moving about 150 pounds off the nose of the truck and going all the way to the back of it. The track doesn't look like it's going to hold up. Mike Stowe moving the weight. How much weight are you putting on the rear, Mike? All I've got, Army, I ain't got the 75 more to move. I'm moving it. Go move the plant over and see what'll happen. Well, big Mike Stowe out of Warrington, Georgia, a crafty move, Army, because he is using the Redman TNT rules to his advantage right now. Yeah, he picks up on the 75-foot rule. They're putting the track back together. He noticed as soon as he left the starting line, when he dialed the horsepower in on that big Ford engine, it was just not going to hold. The track is just not there for him. He's also moving weight of the sled. The sled goes all the way to the left side of the track, so he's moved 75 pounds on the vehicle itself, plus moving the sled over, going to push the cushion, we call it, on the left side. 
by mid-track, we'll be able to tell if it's going to work for him. A little bit of a slow start, but he might start to pick up some ground speed in the 6,200-pound Super. The bad dog Ford of Mike Stowe is rolling down the track right now. You can see how fast those rear wheels are digging into this loose clay surface at Stafford Motor Speedway, but it looks like a good pull for Mike. I believe we might have a new leader, Richard. 245.06 inches. Mike Stowe does take over the lead from the Florida Cracker, so obviously Mike's decision to re Run, rehook, and redo the pool was to his advantage. Let's go trackside. Army's got him right now. Mike Stowe out of Warrington, Georgia. We saw him a moment ago thrashing, trying to move the weight on the back of the vehicle, but also you did something else. You completely went to the opposite side of the track, Mike. Yeah, Army, I wanted to be over there to start with. When Chris had trouble and couldn't start, they said I'd be number one, so I said I won't slid over here. And then Chris got fixed and it kind of took the spot. I wanted to be first after he dropped, but I couldn't start. So I just had to try it over there and see if it was any better, and then I decided we'd move the weight and move it back over, and I don't know, maybe I did right. I hope so. I'll tell you what, you did 245, I put you number one, do you think you're going to be able to stay there? Well, I don't know, it just depends on how the old track does, you know, it could go round, it could get worse, or it could get better, we just have to wait and see. Well, on a loose track last night, Mike Stowe, who is coming to the line now in his bad dog Ford, was a winner. Let's see if things have improved a little bit for him as he's off and rolling. Last night, Richard, he ran out of the same groove. He worked the left side of the track. Much more ground speed today for the number one puller. The track looks a whole lot better today. Stowe has a super run going. Not only a super run, he has got a complete run, a full pull for Mike Stowe, the bad dog out of Warrington, Georgia. Two wins in Stafford left Stowe behind Roush by only one and a half points. In Owensboro, Kentucky in late July, Stowe emerged with a slim half-point advantage. But he missed his front-end weight badly in Monroe, Michigan, and slipped behind Roush by six and a half points, with just two events remaining in Bowling Green, Ohio, and on the campus of Purdue University in Lafayette, Indiana. As we saw earlier with the four-wheelers, Bowling Green can make or break you in the points race because of the large number of vehicles pulling. Stowell came through, taking a first and a ninth, while Roush could do no better than an eighth and a tenth. Going into the Purdue final, Stowell had a one and a half point lead. On the first night at Purdue, Stowe virtually wrapped up the title by placing second to Roush's 14th. That meant all Stowe had to do on the final day was make a respectable finish. Here's what happened. Roush hadn't pulled yet, but all Stowe had to do was pull the front of the sled beyond a spot marked on the track. Stowe said later, Richard, he wasn't nervous until he got into the truck. That's when he said, don't break, baby. Hold on. It was a great win for Stowe, and it takes a great man like Roush to accept defeat like a gentleman. These two guys even room together on the road. Off the track, they're closest of friends, but on the track, competition is number one. Well, when we return from a commercial break, we'll wrap up the exciting points titles won by Howard Lewis and Mike Stowe. Welcome back to Power Tracks, where we've been reviewing the Redman TNT Points Championships won in 1988 for two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive trucks. Let's run down the top five in four-wheel drive points for 1988. Fifth place went to Terry Davis and Super Thing out of Tappahannock, Virginia, with 221 points. Carl Staples of Moyoc, North Carolina, drove Risky Business to fourth with 254 points. Lyons was third with 292 points. Weaver second at 364, and Howard Lewis a champion with 386. In addition to winning the national championship, Lewis High Roller Pulling Team was named TNT's 1988 four-wheel drive team of the year. The other pullers voted for this team not only because of its performance, but because of the professional manner in which it handled itself. Well, Army, what do you look for in the four-wheel drive class for 1989? Richard, as usual, this will be one of the most competitive in the sport of pulling on the Redman TNT circuit. They will crown a points champion from both the winter and the summer circuits. I really believe that Lewis going to be the man to beat. He's earned that distinction. I understand that Weaver is getting out of the sport of pulling. He's building a monster truck. He's a heck of a competitor and we're going to miss him. Jim Lyons, what can you say? He's building a new four-wheeler. He'll be a man to watch. He's going to be as tough as anyone. As always, watch for Carl Staples and the Risky Business Team out of North Carolina. Tommy Rogers and Donnie Sanders out of the Volunteer State with the Tennessean. Terry Davis with the Super Stang Chevrolet. They're going to be tough and a couple of crackers up from West Palm Beach, Florida. Charlie Lowe and the Killer, and Russell DeForest in the Outlaw Ford. Well, here's the final top five in Redman TNT points in the super-modified two-wheel drive class. Chuck Chitwood and Fast Forward 
quit midway through the year and are out of pulling altogether. But they still earned 252 points for fifth place. Wayne Roush's Little Red Truck was fourth with 437 and a half points. Lyons was third with 479. Roush's Model T second at 498 and a half. And Stowe was first with 508 points. Well, Richard Roush may have been runner-up, but keep in mind that he placed two trucks in the top five. And his fellow pullers recognized this accomplishment by voting for him 1988 Redman TNT Puller of the Year for all classes in addition to naming him the team of the year in the two-wheel drive division. And Army, talking about two-wheelers, what about 1989? There's so many people getting involved in this class. I believe that the veterans are going to dominate. Stowe is putting a new truck together, with new area horsepower, new sheet metal. Roush, same two trucks, but promises to find a whole lot more horsepower to be competitive again in 89. Lyons, in addition to running a new four-wheeler, has a new two-wheel truck in the works. And remember, he wants that two-wheel title back. And we can't rule out Ken Lamont. Lamont with the Midnight Express El Camino out of Southern Illinois has landed a new sponsor, and we all know in the motorsporting game, sponsorships mean dollars, and dollars mean horsepower. Well, that's how the four-wheelers and two-wheelers performed in 1988. Now, just down the road, we'll take a look at the performance of the pulling tractors of 1988, as well as the wild racing on the 1988 Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge.